Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. And welcome to another video presented by me, Cool Dude Clem, the scruffiest person in the entire world, according to somebody whose name will not go mentioned in this video. Anyway, in this video I'm going to try to work on a much better power supply. Now, I want to produce a power supply that can provide me with about 35 volts DC with tons of amps and unfortunately to do that I need a really big transformer that can provide that kind of power and I don't have such a transformer so I'm gonna try to modify some transformers that I already have see if I can make them produce that kind of power and we'll see how things go so let's get stuck in here's a transformer I tried to modify I was going to take all these secondaries out and just have one big fat secondary there. But unfortunately, I couldn't really get into this transformer. As you can see, all I've managed to do is take the tape off the edge here. Well, take the tape off the side here. And I cannot get these laminates apart. I only managed to get one off, which is this one right here. And you might be able to see that this has got some kind of glue or epoxy resin or something on it so that's pretty much out the window however despite this transformers appearance and it does look pretty bad as you can see this transformer is still perfectly usable all I need to do is just take this back into place and it'll be perfectly okay to use again so really the only other option is to modify a microwave oven transformer and I know that in the past I tried to do this before and I've had some bad luck with it but I found one of the other microwave oven transformers I have and I made a start and as you can see I'm getting that secondary out pretty good I found out that if I cut the secondary at both ends it's much easier to hammer it out the only trouble is the primary on this transformer is damaged um, as you can see there's a big gouge here and it's completely open I don't know how this happened but I do know that not only am I going to have to wind a new secondary for this transformer I'm also going to have to wind a new primary too if I can wind at least three ohms onto there that should be enough so let's get out into the shed and finish this thing off well, here we are again, in our extremely messy quote-unquote shed. Have you ever seen this place before? There's a bike I made out of all spare parts, which I cannot get into the camera's frame. Oh, and over here, is a new Mac that I found, a new iMac. Well, a new old iMac. I haven't even tested this yet to see if it works. I found this just thrown out. Thought I'd take it see if I can get it going again still got the other one in pieces which I've tried to repair but still don't know what's wrong with it but let's power up this one and see if it works But at least it's staying on, unlike the other one. Just nothing on the screen, that's all. Well, at least this one seems to have a working power supply. So that's um, one good thing. Off again. Yeah. So maybe if I take the power supply out of that one and put it into this one, might have a working iMac again. That's going to be for another day. Now I'm going to try to bang these secondaries out. in there. 
I've got to give a great big whack. And of course, I always miss. It's coming out. Just pause the camera while I do all this. Hooray, one side out. Now I've just got to do this side. The other side came out a bit quicker than I expected. I was still pounding on it without realising it was out. Now I've got to try to remove the primary and the shunts and then I'll have a transformer core to do whatever the hell I like with. One transformer core, hold the onions. Well, Project Mott is well on the way now. As you can see, I've started winding a primary. You may also be able to see that I've stuffed a couple of Smarties boxes in there to keep the primary so it's only filling about a third of that gap. But anyway, right now I've only got about 2.8 turns of wire on there. And that took me all evening, and I've still got plenty more to do. Even though 2.8 ohms is about the same as a regular microwave oven transformer primary, I want to fill this space with windings. I want to cram as much windings in there as I can so I get lots and lots of induction. So hopefully that way, this transformer won't be a great big fat power hog. Well, okay, I think it's just about time to test this thing now. Now, I have wound as much turns as I can onto that, while keeping it only to about a third full. So this is absolutely crammed full of windings. There is absolutely no more that I can put in there. And that's come to exactly 5 ohms. I couldn't have done that better if I tried. I would have liked to have had at least 20 ohms, but I think we'll have to settle for 5. Now, I'm a little bit worried about connecting this up to the mains because I don't really want this going up in smoke the moment I turn it on. So what I've done is I've connected this in series with this heater here. And I'm using that as a ballast. Now I've probably just materialised in front of the camera. I can't really see what the camera's seeing because uh, the screen's on the other side. But anyway, this thing has got switches on the side. So not only can I turn the thing on and off via the switches on the heater, but I can also select how much power is going through. Got low power like that, medium power like that, and with both the switches on, full power. Okay, so first test I'm gonna do is measure how much current at the different power levels. First of all, let's try low power. And nothing seems to be reading on the meter because I haven't put it onto the right thing. Right. Let's try that again. Okay, so this is low power. Okay, we have about 992 milliamps going through it. Right, let's try it on medium power. Okay, we have about 1.3 amp. And I have done a little bit of a silly thing here. I've put it into the low amp jack, which I could have easily blown the fuse on that. So I've put it into the 10 amp jack, just in case, but obviously that wasn't going to blow the meter, but I should have done that just in case. Now let's just turn that on again. You might notice that I put a couple of wires here, made a little secondary, just three turns of wire. Let's see if this does anything. I hope I'm not blocking the camera. Okay, there's a little bit of sparking there. Nothing tremendous, but this is just for test purposes. Now I know that works. I'm gonna wind a much bigger secondary on there and see if I can power something with it. But just out of curiosity, I wanna see how much voltage is coming out of that secondary. It's probably something ridiculous like half a volt, but let's see what we've got. Uh, no, actually, it's uh, apparently more than two volts. All right, let's just turn up the range a little bit. And we have, well, two and a half volts. Well, I might just as well test how much voltage is going through that coil. Better turn this up a little bit. Right, at low power, we have 187 188 volts going through there. Right, let's see what we have with high power, um, medium power. 
And at medium power, 195 volts. And I down power this on full power just in case I blow it. And the coil. Maybe a couple of degrees warmer than room temperature. Anyway, let's see if I can wind a secondary on this and power something with it. Now, I want 25 volts out of that transformer. And if this piece of wire gives me 2.5 volts, obviously a wire 10 times long as this will give me 25 volts to play with. So that's what I'm going to do now. Alright, well, I've got some wire. Now time to make a secondary. Well, it'd be rude not to, wouldn't it? Gotta try some high current as well. Do you think it's getting hot? Well, I just had to do this, didn't I? Let's see how hot this got. Hmm, it's warm. The primaries? Hmm. Barely warm at all. And here is the transformer completed. I've put two 25 volt secondaries on there, which I can connect in parallel for lots and lots of amps. And over here you can see all the cable that I've had to strip to get the wire out. And when I'd wound all that wire onto the transformer, I found I had to take a little bit off because I had a little bit more than the 25 volts that I wanted. Anyway, now I'm going to wire this transformer up to my ZVS driver and I'm going to play with my new toy. Okay, so now you can see the transformer bolted to the underside of my shelf. And I've got my ZVS, sorry, ZVS flyback driver connected as a load. People say I should say ZVS because where I'm from, I'll just say zero switching voltage. That way it doesn't matter where I'm from. It will still sound the same. Anyway, let's power this up and see how it does. Okay, all wired up and ready to go. Got the meter to measure any kind of voltage drop that we might have. Going to start with the heater on low. Okay, see if this does anything. Okay, oh, I've got a bit of a voltage drop there. Goes down to 16 volts. Let's try it with heater on medium that's much better and now we will try with the heater on high Size of that thing. And that pretty much brings us to the end of this video. Now I've discovered how to modify microwave oven transformers, this has opened a whole new doorway to new things and stuff that I could do. You know, burnouts, lots and lots of power from my projects, maybe even popping a few capacitors in the future, who knows? But Anyway, that's all going to be for future videos because I've got to go now and go through hours and hours of footage and edit this down to about 10 or 15 minutes. So, I'll see you next time. So, um, well, I won't see you next time, but until next time, goodbye. Well, that's it for this episode of Call to Clem's Electronic Workshop. Remember, if you like these videos, feel free to subscribe. You'd be glad you did. And tell your friends about Cool Dude Clem and his electronic workshop. And if you want to see the previous episode of Cool Dude Clem's electronic workshop, click on the box on the right. Or if you want to see more of my videos, click on me right now to visit my channel. That's just about it for now. I'll see you next time. Well, I won't see you next time. But anyway, until next time, goodbye.